Hi guys, let's have a quick look at lens blur in Affinity Photo. Used to emphasize the subject mostly, as you can see there. Now this is done on the iPad, but it's equally applicable to the desktop version, Mac or PC. It's very versatile and very easy. So how to set up the selection? Well, let's begin. I'll be using a stock image from Pixabay in the stock studio for this tutorial. You can find other stock photos of people from Envato Elements, for example. For this how-to, it helps if you choose a stock where the model has edges that you can clearly see, because we'll need to select it from its background. It's also an added bonus if the background is not too distracting. Now you can see the background there is somewhat distracting. You've got a large window frame right down the edge of the girl's face. Now we need to take the emphasis off that and that's what we'll do. So just create for this object, create a base new project and simply use a standard photo preset. That's all we need. Select the image. You can see that I've pinched the canvas in once it's created so I can see it all on the iPad screen. Open the stock studio and lo locate the image you want to use. Or of course, you might use your own image from the Photos app. But you can see the image I've used there. If you scroll through Pixabay, it's, oh, I don't know, one or two screens down maybe. But there it is. It's not too far into the Pixabay um, collection. Drag the image onto the canvas. Of course it will be the wrong size, but we can easily fix that. In fact, it will be massive. Now, set the image center in the focus point setting. You can see it down there. Now, it's normal, it defaults to the top left hand corner, the anchor. So I set the anchor right to the center. Now, enable the lock between the width and height. And steadily reduce the image size to fit the canvas. So just drag your Apple Pencil down over the numbers, then the numbers will scroll down. You can see the blue borders come in. Um, that tells you that you're reducing the size. You could reduce it so it's actually on the canvas, but I want the photo to be the complete size of the canvas. You may lose a bit of your original image, but that's okay. You shouldn't have... Um, needed detail out to the edge. Think of it as a bleed setting <laughs> in a document. Now, now that you have it the right size or the size you want, create a duplicate and lock the original because you don't want to mess with the original. It's a pain to go and find it again or it may be the only original you have. Unselect the original and just use your duplicate. And you can see I've done that there. Now, we need to create a selection of the background behind the model you want to focus on. Remember, the focus is on the model, not the background. So tap the selection persona. That's the little sort of lens circle that's up the top left top toolbar there. Now, it moves when, of course, you put on the question mark thing so I can see the what the toolbars are called. But you need the selection persona. And then select the Smart Selection Brush tool on the toolbar. That's, what can I see there? One, two. It's the third option down. Once you select the Smart Selection Brush tool, you're ready to go. Now we need to select out the background area around the model. This can be a model or even the background behind an object that may be the focus of a sales pitch or something like that. But you want the focus on the model, the object of the photograph. Set the brush width initially to a quite small area, especially if your model has soft edges like hair. Now I've set it there to 30 pixels, not very big at all, but it still works fine. Let's begin the selection. Fairly straightforward. You'll see the crawling ants appear around the edges of the image as you select the area. You don't have to paint it on like a brush. Just tap your pencil to the screen and you'll see the 
you'll see the crawling ants appear around the edge. And draw your brush across the screen. Um, you, if you haven't done it much, you'll get the feel of it, and you can always undo it if you make a mistake. Now you can see the crawling ants outline here, and you can add or subtract areas to fine tune it. If your brush is selecting too much area, use a smaller brush. You can be as exact as you like, but don't spend a lot of time initially on this. When you're happy, select Refine and look for obvious bits you may have missed. Now there we go, there's Refine selected. Now this is the refined image, nicely picked out. When you're happy, tap the Apply button down the bottom right hand side there. The crawling marching ants will become visible again. And you can see there that there are two little points just to the right of the girl's um, hair there in the back in the right hand corner of the shot, which I probably could have painted out, but I've left them there because they'll fade into the background anyway. Now when you tap apply, the red part goes away and it reverts back to the image with the crawling ants on it. And now we can apply the blur only to the selected area. This will remove the hard window frame that is right in the main focal area and detracting from the model's appearance. You can see it there. It is, it's quite a distraction. It's not a very well taken photo. But there you go. Now, select filters. That's the, the, the funnel object in the right hand toolbar there. There are two options here. You can use either one. You can select Add Live Filters, turn that switch on up the top there, or not. Adding Live Filters creates a mask of your action, while the option to not use Live Filters modifies the image directly. Also, if you use Live Filters, you can't use the Split Screen option, and that can sometimes be useful. If you think you might need the split screen option, then don't use live filters. But be aware there is a slight difference. What can I say? Experiment. Now the split screen using a non-live filter. However, I'm going to use the live filters because I may want to alter it later. So select live filter and then Lens Blur. And you can see who I've selected them there. The Context Toolbar will appear. And the left-hand object, the radius on the Context Toolbar, is the part you're interested in. Certainly initially. At this stage, the only setting you need to change is the very left one, Radius. I'll set mine to 60 pixels and you can see the blur has been applied nicely. That rigid window frame is now not quite so um, overpowering. You can experiment with the other options, but for this um, session all we need is the 60 pixels. Now we can see the blur filter mask applied to the image. If you show your layers, there's the mask applied to the image. I've also tapped the edit button, those three dots, and tapped deselect to remove the crawling ants and selected the move tool to hide the context toolbar. That particularly intrusive window frame is now much softened and faded into the background. Now that's the end of this little tutorial. You can see its potential, I'm sure. There are some quite powerful tools there, but just to get you started, that's all we did was just blur the background and leave the model um, clear. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the thumbs up to like the whole thing. If you tap on the bell, you'll also be reminded um, by YouTube of future videos that I might put up there.